Hi, my name is John Borhek, and I'm a Solutions Architect with VM Sources. Here with me is Andrew Schaefer, also of VM Sources, and John Petty and Pete Maddox of Dot Hill. Andrew, John, and Pete will be answering your questions while I'm presenting. Please feel free to submit via the GoToWebinar dialog at the right-hand side of your screen. After the live demo, we'll open the floor and the microphones for questions and discussion. Today we're going to talk about everything from spindles to sand best practices and then have a live demonstration of how to configure RAID, create LUNs, and present those LUNs to vSphere 5.5. Let's get started. Spindles are individual disk drives. They come in a variety of speeds and adapter types such as SATA, Nearline, and SAS. What you need to know is the faster the rotational speed of the drive, the lower the seek time, and the higher the IOPS. So what is a SAN? SANs have a couple of hallmarks. First, SAN networks by definition are supposed to be dedicated to storage regardless of the protocol. Fiber channel is often perceived to be more reliable because its protocol and its hardware preclude the use of fiber channel networks for other purposes. Many people get into trouble with iSCSI because they use their production or other networks to present storage. This must be avoided at all costs. A SAN is basically a box of disks with some controllers to apply logic. Controllers apply RAID to the spindles, create LUNs, and present those LUNs with a protocol such as Fiber Channel or iSCSI. RAID is the ability to combine many spindles into logical groups. RAID 0 has almost no use in production, as a single fault would corrupt the entire array. RAID 1 is often perceived as a performance alternative, but that's true only when there are sufficient spindles in the group to achieve the IOPS desired. RAID 5 is an economical choice which can present excellent performance when there are enough spindles in its group. RAID 6 is required by certain storage vendors instead of RAID 5. RAID 6 has dual parity and is therefore slower than other RAID but offers greater fault tolerance. We would prefer RAID 5 with a spare if that's supported by your vendor. Hybrid RAID is our preferred choice whenever possible. Theoretically, any RAID could be nested in any other, given enough sets of disks. Common hybrid RAID is RAID 1 plus 0 and RAID 5 plus 0, also known as RAID 10 and RAID 50. V-disks, storage pools, and members are all terms used to describe the logical storage created when you combine spindles with RAID. People often retain legacy recommendations for physical servers with dedicated storage arrays and use RAID 1 or RAID 10 incorrectly. You fail to realize the benefits of SAN storage unless you can configure more disks into larger RAID pools. We recommend RAID 5 plus 0 as a best practice. Here's an example of a SAN configured for overall highest capacity with RAID 5 and a spare. RAID 5 natively has one parity disk. If one spindle fails, the parity disk will maintain the integrity of the, of the volume, but leave you without parity. After a spindle failure, the spare will come online as the parity disk, allowing one more failure. You get the advantage of RAID 5 and the fault tolerance of RAID 6. Here is an example of a SAN configured with RAID 5 plus 0 for performance. Notice there are no spares, leaving this volume with N-1 single fault tolerance across all spindles. In this example, two separate RAID 5 groups have been striped with RAID 0. Overall, there are two parity disks, one for each RAID 5 group. But because the two groups are striped with RAID 0, you could lose only one spindle per group and maintain the integrity of the RAID 0. I want you to consider which of these configurations will yield better performance. 12 spindles spinning at 15,000 RPM or 24 spindles spinning at 10,000 RPM. Do the math and more spindles almost always wins. So how should you configure your SAN? We like to configure our SANs with the fewest number of RAID groups that makes the most sense for performance and availability. What you definitely want to avoid doing is applying recommendations for legacy physical servers to your SAN. Fewer spindles yields lower IOPS and defeats the purposes of storage virtualization. 
Here's an example of a SAN with many RAID 1 pools of just a few disks each. This is a waste of space and will not perform well either. Let's go ahead and get into our live demonstration. For this, I'm going to log into my Dothill 3000 series SAN. And I'm going to begin by configuring a VDisk. I'm going to right click on VDisks. I'm going to go to provisioning. I'm going to choose create VDisk. With Dothill, the VDisk is the element to which we apply RAID. In this case, we're going to configure our RAID 5 volume. And if we used all the disks, like I am now, we simply have single disk parity. We could lose one disk and the second loss would result in an immediate volume failure. It would be a better choice to leave one disk available and configure it as a spare. If I go ahead and choose Create VDisk, I have a RAID 5 volume with one spare. Let's take another example here. We'll look at RAID 50. In this case, I could do just as we talked about earlier. I could configure two RAID 5s, which would be striped as RAID 0. This would be good. It would have one parity disk for each of the two RAID 5 groups, but no spares. It would be much better to do the following. Now I have one spare for each RAID group. I can't use a single global spare because the RAID 5 volumes themselves need to be balanced. If I have five disks in one RAID 5, I need to have five disks in another RAID 5. We'd also like to suggest another alternative that might be preferable depending on what your physical disk configuration is, and that would be to use a larger number of subdisks, which will increase the number of parity disks available to you. In this case, Instead of using spares, I will have, by default, created three parity disks, thus giving me the highest performance and availability of all the configurations. This is the VDisk that I'm actually going to configure. See how quickly the Dothill SAN creates a VDisk? That's one of the beauties of this device is that it's really quick in terms of its administration. Now that we have our VDisk configured, we have one volume with 5.3 terabytes of available space. Now what can we do with this? Well, we can do anything we want. But what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to create a volume set, a set of disks with equally divided capacity. So I'm going to go to Create Volume Set, All right, and I'm going to tell it I want five volumes. Right, and notice that it will automatically divide the total available space by the number of disks I'm creating. And I'm going to start at LUN 151 as I create these disks. I'm going to go ahead and say Apply. And another quick creation. Again, the beauty of the Dothill SAN is that it's quick. All right, now here we've switched over to our ESX server. And as you'll see, right now we have no connected targets, no connected devices, no connected paths. In fact, under storage, the only thing that we have is the local VMware disk on the ESX server that we're using. And please notice that we're using ESX version 5.5, the very latest version of ESX server. Let's go back to storage adapters, and I want to select the iSCSI software adapter, and I want to choose properties, and I want to choose dynamic discovery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to input one IP address. All right, this is the discovery IP address of our iSCSI SAN. It could be literally any one of our SAN's IP addresses, provided our SAN has more than one IP address. Let's go ahead and say OK. One thing I'd like you to notice here is that I switch over to the Static Discovery tab, and it hasn't just discovered the IP address that I inputted, but it's also discovered all of the other IP addresses on the iSCSI SAN. Each one of these represents a port, an active port, 
on the SANS iSCSI controllers. That means we have a total of eight active ports on the SANS iSCSI controllers, which means we can have more paths per LUN in every case. As soon as I say close, it's going to ask me to rescan my volumes, rescan my adapter, and in just a few seconds, if everything's worked properly, we should see our five volumes, 151, 2, 3, 4, and 5, along with two enclosure devices, which you'll notice have no configured space. The rest of these are just about a terabyte in overall size. All right, and that's the simple fact of taking a physical disk, a spindle, which we see in our SANS configuration. I'll show you the front of the disk. We take a physical disk and we convert it into a V-disk. And we take the V-disk and we deploy LUNs. Then we rescan our ESX server and those LUNs make themselves immediately available to us, whereupon they're completely ready to configure brand new VMFS5 volumes. Simple as that. Now before we get to our Q&A, I'd like to get back to the slide set for just a second. I'll show you that volume when it's created. It actually takes just a few seconds to format a VMFS5 volume. I'd like to talk about what to look for in a SAN. Certain traits are beneficial no matter what vendor or type of SAN you choose. In general, look for the largest number of fast disks. 24 by 10K disks are better than 12 by 15K disks. Another thing to look for is active-active port configuration. Even today, some SANs are still active-passive, and some SANs have only one active port per controller. Furthermore, many SANs don't support a performance-increasing technology known as delayed ACK. Ask your SAN vendor if it's okay to use delayed ACK, which, by the way, is the default setting in vSphere 4.1 and higher. Please join us for our next webinar, The Advantages of Auto-Tearing SAN for VMware vSphere. Check your email for invitations in November. I'd like to thank you. My name is John Borhek. I'm with VM Sources Virtualization. With me is Andrew Schaefer of VM Sources Virtualization, John Petty, and Pete Maddox of Dot Hill SAN. Now we'd like to open up the floor for your questions and answers.